It's going to be very exciting. And coming up, before we get to that, though, for the pack, they got a tough one tonight in their own house, though, still, against Louisville, less than 30 minutes until tip. Isaiah James averaging just over 15 points per game. She is a baller, and she's going to try to lead the pack to another ranked win. It is a monster game. There's no question about that. And with that said, let's go courtside. Debbie Antonelli joins us live. Uh, all right, Debbie, um, this, there's so much to talk about with this game in particular. Uh, before we go into X's and O's and the importance on both sides, uh, why we're playing tonight uh, is bigger than life itself, isn't it? The power of pink is special, that's for sure. And when you are playing for something greater than yourself, it is amazing what you can accomplish. And that's exactly the kind of game we're going to have tonight. The house is full of pink. We'll have a huge cancer survivor celebration at halftime. This is the 19th year that we've had this event. And I can tell you right now that if Coach Al's looking down on us, and I know she is, she would be really proud to see what NC State and what the nation has been able to do to come together to create awareness and raise money to fight cancer. All right, so tell people who may not know yet or just tuning in for the first time why this night is so special to you personally as well, because I know you have a, a special relationship with KL. I had a 30-year relationship with my coach, and I loved her dearly, and I miss her. And those of us that played for Kay at NC State of her 34 years, would, you would find a similar message. It would be one of incredible love and joy for having an opportunity to play here. She had a 34-year career at NC State. She's a Naismith Hall of Famer. She won a gold medal. She's taken a team to the Final Four. She has an incredible basketball legacy. 737 wins at NC State, and she just wants one more. 738, she wants to be a, a chance to beat cancer. I, I speak on behalf all the time on all the former players and staff that work for Coach Al because we all share a similar love and incredible bond because of the relationships we all had with her. Um, the game itself, uh, we've gone through uh, what happened over the weekend. Obviously, Virginia Tech with a big overtime win against North Carolina yesterday. We go through the standings. We understand what's at stake tonight, where Louisville is in the standings, where NC State is, what the Wolfpack has coming up with Virginia Tech on Thursday. Uh, for everybody that loves women's basketball, even if you just love basketball, period, the ACC race, Debbie, is so good. It's loaded with star power. Great coaches. We've talked about the environment. You have another great one tonight uh, on a Monday night in Raleigh. Uh, you can't ask for more as far as just basketball is concerned. <laughs> but tonight kind of feels like an Elite Eight Final Four kind of matchup with Louisville and NC State with what they both bring to the table. And really, they do it very different ways too, don't they? You know, it's amazing how important this game is in the ACC race. Louisville sits on top. They were picked to finish fourth in the league. Nobody expected them to be here right now. NC State is the third-ranked team in the country. They were picked to finish eighth. Nobody expected them to be where they are. Yet here we are in the NCAA tournament. Charlie Brackets has nine teams from the ACC already seated, not on the bubble. That tells you right now how strong this league has been. I don't expect anyone to win this league with one or two losses. I expect three or four. That's how good I think the talent is, how closely competitive the games have been, how great the environments have been. I mean, look at Virginia Tech, back-to-back sold-out environments at Castle Coliseum. NC State's got a secondary market for tickets for women's games <laughs> because they're sold out with 5,500 fans that show up that are excited about being here. The students are wrapped around the building. Not all the students can get into the game. That's amazing to think about that environment. But when you look at the race and the competitiveness of the league, it's going to come right down to the last game of the regular season like it usually does when you have this much talent in one spot. All right, so since we're talking these two teams and neither one was picked to finish at the top of the league, but they both have a chance to do so, what has been the catalyst this season for NC State, Debbie, and what has been the catalyst for Louisville? I'm going to say that what has fueled both of these teams is very similar. When you look at their assisted basket numbers, they're high. The ball doesn't get stuck, they move it. They all have options that can score. Nobody is a dominant player with a ball in their hands 
All five players on both teams can score. Louisville has five players that have scored over 1,000 points. The portal has given Jeff Walls a chance to merge some players and some talent together. And this is a really good basketball team with a little bit of an edge. Louisville always is better when they have an edge. They've been to five straight Elite Eights. Jeff Walls has taken four teams to the Final Four. They're in first place in the ACC, and they play a grinded out, gritty defense. I mean, they are going to be in NC State's grill. I expect this to be a slowdown, possession for possession, execution down to the end, like it happens a lot in this league. And in NC State, they're going to have to take care of the basketball. They're going to have to reverse the ball against Louisville's pressure. They're going to have to recognize the multiple defensive looks that Jeff Walls is going to put on the floor. This is going to be a challenging high IQ, take care of the basketball, make the right read, and make shots because everything's going to be contested. So getting on the glass, getting to the free throw line, and those extra possessions will matter as well. I think the game plan is the same for both teams. That's how good they are. Debbie, it's an amazing seven days for Louisville. I mean, the game tonight, obviously, tons at stake. They get Notre Dame at home on Thursday, then go to Syracuse on Sunday. Uh, that's almost against the law to have three games like that in a span of seven days, but that's exactly what Jeff's got to, to face. Um, you got to walk before you run, but, man, I, I can't think of a worse, more difficult run for any team over a span of seven days than what Louisville's facing. And you're right. And here's the way Jeff Walls and his staff will look at it. Okay, we just played the Asia Fair. Okay, she dropped 28 on us. Now we're at NC State. They got great guard play. We're going to play Notre Dame. We're going to go against Hildago. Then we're going to have the Asia Fair again. It's the same similar how you guard teams, giving them different looks, changing up your ball screen coverage. All of that will be very similar with a defense for Louisville that knows how to grind out possessions. I think that's going to be... While others would say what exactly you said, Pac, I think Jeff Walls welcomes that kind of challenge and competitiveness in his schedule because he knows what he needs to do, and each game helps them get better prepared for the next opportunity against really good guard play. And, of course, NC State on the flip side, they have the emotional game with North Carolina, which always has fireworks and friction and all that great stuff, and the Hills you know, push the Wolfpack. State found a way to win late, which is beautiful. If you're an NC State fan, you get the game going on tonight. And then Thursday, everybody and their brother is going to be there when Virginia Tech comes to town. And we know how great the NC State-Virginia Tech game was up in Blacksburg. So the Wolfpack is kind of in the midst of this crazy schedule, too. I mean, it, that's what's the fun thing about ACC Women's Hoops right now. There's so many good games. I mean, that's it right there, Pac. That's what it is. Wes Moore told me today he's still trying to catch up from his sleep on the Virginia Tech game up there in Blacksburg because, you know, that was a tough finish, finish for NC State. So uh, you can guarantee Kenny Brooks will have his team ready. I had them on Sunday yesterday. I will say this. I, I think the house was about 35% Hokey fans in Carmichael Arena. That won't happen here in Reynolds because there's no tickets for the Hokey fans to get. Uh, so it, it will be an NC State crowd, and this is a tough environment. I think Louisville averages 8,000 fans. That's a tough environment. This has got to be up there, and Castle's becoming that with their sold-out crowds. You love to see it, especially as a female in sports and as a basketball player. You, Debbie, I know you love the support that women's hoops is getting now. On the men's side, we're getting ready for a Virginia-Miami basketball game that on, on that side could have big implications in terms of the big picture, not just ACC, but NCAA tournament. Virginia's on a certain path. They've won six straight. Miami, they're getting healthier, which is good news. What do you see in this matchup tonight? I think it's going to be a great one. And I think at home, Virginia really plays well. They shoot the ball much better at home than they do on the road. It'll be fun tonight. Antonella again, big time game tonight. Louisville and NC State, just a dynamic game. Uh, again, number two top 15 team. Feels like an elite eight final four kind of game. Here's Olivia Cochran, who's having a great year. And the Louisville, again, it's, it's the group of five, right? It's not necessarily the star power. It's just the way they play as a team that makes them so tough. Group of five, six, seven. Jada Curry sometimes coming off the bench, doing her thing. It, you really have to pick your poison, really with both of these teams. Yep. Because as Debbie Antonelli just said, they sort of do it in a similar fashion of it's a total team effort. There's not necessarily one superstar in either one of the teams. 
Lions. Isaiah James has had some big games. So have a couple of other players for NC State. Sonia Rivers, obviously, is another one. Well, but on any for, given night. She could go for 30-something. I mean, NC State's had a couple of those crazy nights where you're like, what? Who scored how many points? Where did that come from? And the defense will be on display here, too. They're sound basketball teams, two veteran head coaches who know what it takes to win in big games. And you got to give NC State the nod in this one because of that home court advantage, man. It is going to be loud and pink and raucous. Yeah, I, I think both these games tonight, I, again, home does home court matter? It does. Okay. Um, again, we gave you the stat on the men's side. In fact, I wrote it down. Uh, the top 25 teams against unranked teams on the road this year are 71 and 66. So being on the road is like, hey, good luck. But these two home teams tonight, NC State women at home, men for Virginia, that's tough, man. Good luck. They have true home advantages. No doubt why. about it's it. It's not just saying, oh, we're sleeping in our own bed. Like the fans actually That's play it. a massive factor for both of these yeah. teams. State's 11-0 and 0 at home. You see on that screen, of course, Virginia's won 22 straight on the men's side at JPJ. So, again, that's why we love college sports. You roll the ball out, see where it goes. Two good ones though tonight in the ACC. Louisville at NC State on the women's side. Miami at Virginia tonight on the men's side. This is the ACC on ESPN as we welcome you to NC State and Big Monday and Play 4K, a big game in the ACC between Louisville at the top of the standings with just one conference loss, taking on the Wolfpack, who are also very close on this big, big night. Coach thank you for showing us how to keep going, even when things get tough. Your strength through hard times is the driving force behind our team's effort in every game. In your wise words, strength does not come from the body. It comes from the will. And we have the will to put our all in every game and to carry on your legacy. Each dribble, each pass, and each basket reflects a commitment to excellence. As we journey together, united as one pack, echoes of Coach K. Yao's resilience guide us. Her career in basketball stands as a testament to unwavering commitment and conquering challenges on and off the court. Together. Ready? Together. During her battle with cancer, she taught us that with faith, teamwork, and great work ethic, we can overcome any obstacle life throws our way. As Coach K. Yao says, when life kicks, life you, kicks you, let it kick you forward. We play not just for the win, but for the strength found in unity and the fiery spirit of Coach K. Yao. Why do we play? We play for Coach K. Yao. And this is indeed a very special night, certainly much bigger than basketball, the annual Play for K game at NC State, where the legendary head coach K. Yao was on the sidelines for 34 years and they will be honoring her throughout the night. So glad you could join us tonight, Pam Ward, along with Deb Antonelli, who had the great honor and pleasure of playing for Coach Yao. It was exactly that. It was a pleasure, and I'm grateful that she selected me, and so are many other former players in her 34 years. But tonight, the power of pink is really amazing because this time of year, when players wear pink, it's a unifying, galvanizing color that allows players to play freely because you're not playing for yourself. You're playing for a cause greater than yourself and it brings teams together, which means the quality of play is gonna be great, Pam. And we've got the two best teams in the ACC to showcase Play for K on Big Monday. Yeah, what a night it is. The team's at the top of the standings. North Carolina is the only team to beat Louisville so far in conference play this year. And we are underway. NC State with the black jerseys trimmed in pink. And Isaiah James right away took it to Sidney Taylor and got fouled. Now our USPS ground advantage need to know. Louisville, as we talked about, in very first place, there's CNC State, one of a couple of teams with two losses. And they both have a lot of ranked teams on their schedules because the ACC this year, Deb Antonelli, is ridiculously good and fun. I mean, let's go ahead and start it off like this. Charlie Cream has nine teams from this league seated 
not on the bubble, not last four in, first four out. I mean, they're seeded. NC State was picked to finish eighth in this league. They're in second place and number three in the country. Louisville was picked to finish fourth. They sit in first place. They're number 15. That sets up for a big time game. And a lot of new faces in this Louisville starting five. They have eight newcomers in all. Olivia Cochran is the veteran that has been there all four years. Went over 1,000 points this season. And Louisville starts things off as live by throwing the basketball away and certainly controlling turnovers is something that is important to Jeff Walls, the head coach at Louisville, now in his 17th year. Well, Louisville will bring multiple defensive looks, and there's a turnover right away. Back-to-back -back turnovers for both teams. Cochran got away with a high dribble. That has made the folks here at Reynolds a little bit grumpy. So you're going to have to read what the defense looks like, and NC State's going to have to move the ball. You can't get the ball, get stuck. And Nyla Harris, a little bit too physical with River Baldwin, picks up the personal fouls. Jeff Walls has done a tremendous job with this Louisville team as he's taken them to a couple of finals and just seems to be in the Elite Eight every single year. A lot of new faces this year. He says they're finally starting to kind of come together because it certainly takes a while. I mean, five straight Elite Eights. He's been to four Final Fours. And Isaiah James on the back door. Look, which NC State spent a lot of time on a shoot around. Isaiah James, certainly a special player now with all three of NC State's points. She is our leading scorer, averaging over 15 points a game. Shot by Jefferson Kiki, who is a transfer after playing her first four years at James Madison University. Leading them in scoring at just over 13 points per game. NC State worked on backdoor, knowing Louisville is up the line and they overplay. This is a great look and a, a tremendous finish by Isaiah James, the lefty. When she gets off to a good start, that's a good sign for NC State. And there's James. Worked the baseline to perfection and then had to do it the hard way by going up with the follow. In the last possession, Louisville went dribble drive into a late ball screen on the top of the floor. Now they're running their Princeton action, their chin action. There's a lot of different ways that Louisville can beat you offensively. That was the biggest concern for Coach Wes Morris. Cochran sends one up from the outside. That was a long two. That's a big matchup to keep your eye on. Big O, Olivia Cochran is going to give River Baldwin all she can handle on the interior. Amy Collins. Misses from the top of the circle. Now the spin move, the finish, and the foul. Harris gets it. She's coming off a career-high 18 points and a big win against Syracuse. And a career-high 14 rebounds as well. She's really starting to pick up her game. I mean, she's a player that in her second year at Louisville, her minutes have gone up, her production has gotten better. And when you look at Louisville, they don't have a dominant low post 6-5 presence like NC State, but they have interchangeable parts and great ball pressure on the perimeter. Harris started the last eight games last year, and now in the starting lineup this season. Rivers with the miss. Cochran looked like she might have gotten hit in the face, and that left a wide open lane for James, who is off to a blazing start. Now the turnover, Rivers. Might be the fastest person in the building, and she draws yet another foul. Good veteran crew here tonight. Dee Kantner, Joe Vasili, and Denise Brooks. Tania Rivers might be the defensive player of the year in the ACC. She has been fantastic on the top of the floor. She's long and athletic. She has great anticipation. by Harris, that is the second for her. Thursday night at 6 Eastern on ESPN, more women's basketball in the ACC as you will see this Louisville team at home against Notre Dame. That's Thursday, 6 Eastern on ESPN and the app. And Thursday night here, a pretty good one. Virginia Tech oh, yeah. coming in town.
There won't be any Hokies in the building, though, because NC State doesn't have any seats yes. for the Hokies to show up. We saw a lot of Hokies in Carmichael yesterday. Uh, about 35% is what uh, I was told. But yeah, every ticket has been spoken for for the rest of the season here at Reynolds. The secondary ticket market is on fire for people trying to get into the games. James. Cut. Cut off, lost the ball, but River Baldwin was able to bring it home. Isaiah James is active, and she's ready to play. She has been fantastic early on. Sydney Taylor, Taylor, if she gets hot, she's one of the best three-point shooters last year in the A-10 at UMass. First team all Atlantic 10 last year playing for UMass. This is her first year in Louisville. James kicking it out. Good look for Madison Hayes. If Louisville's going to switch, NC State's got to punish those switches. They've got to take advantage of matchups they can win off the bounce. They've got to understand space. Cochran has hit a couple from out there. Thought about it. Got so much better at her face up there. Jefferson over Hayes. Good defense. And Rivers gets the ball and goes. That was the first shot that Ruval has missed. Collins can't get it to go from the baseline. Now Taylor spots up for three. Cochran. As she's done throughout her career, able to muscle in to get the rebound, leads the team in that category this year. Good pace in the first yeah. five minutes. No whistles. No whistles. James. Zaya James. James already into double figures. That was fast. Now Jefferson tries to kiss it off glass and does. That's her second basket. Last year, Sunbelt Player of the Year, a transfer from JMU. You know, Louisville's got five players on the floor that have scored over 1,000 points in their career. And a lot of experience, most of them at other schools. What a fast start. James. No come with a long closeout. She's on fire, and then Jefferson on the other end. High off the glass. I play for my mother. Play for Play for Michelle Dynasty. I play for Claire Droge. I play for Carolyn Robinson. I play for my Auntie Terry and my Auntie Nelly. I play for Coach Tosh. Let me go. And the players for Louisville displaying who they are playing for here in this uh, Play for K game at NC State. The last player you saw was Aaliyah Love, also known as Lili, who used to be at Georgia Tech and she held up a card for Tasha Butts, who was an assistant coach there for Mel Fortner, and unfortunately uh, we lost her last October at the age of 41. We also want to recognize Kiana Jefferson, Kiki's mom, who is battling cancer right now, and sending a shout out to inspire her as well. I also saw Claire Drosch, a great player at Boston College, who we lost too early. NC State with Sanaya Rivers trying to get it coast to coast. This has been a great pace so far in this game. Rebound taken down by Zoe Brooks, the freshman, one of the highest rated, in fact, the highest ranked recruit NC State has ever gotten as she is out of the state of New Jersey. There's a couple of McDonald's All-Americans on the floor for NC State. Madison Hayes is one, and Isaiah James. My goodness, shoot till your heart falls off, James. Holy smokes. And James now with 13 points. And 
tied up the ball game. Jefferson couldn't get it to roll in, so the ball stays, however, with the cards. So impressive the way Isaiah James is hunting her shot, playing off the Mimi Collins screen, and they're going under. Jeff Walls and his defense going under to try to prevent James from turning the corner, and she steps back to hit the triple. She's made the most for NC State this year coming into the game. Turnaround shot is missed. Westmore in his 11th season at NC State. Three-time ACC Coach of the Year. And he and Jeff Walls have a, a good relationship, so they talk fairly often, and Coach Moore says he appreciates the candor. I guess there's one thing about Jeff Walls, he's very uh, candid, I would say. Well, I think from both of them, you're going to get exactly what they're thinking. Right? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I love to see mutual respect across the aisle, if you will. That's what exactly we get from these two coaches that have had tremendous success with their programs. Mimi Collins at the free throw line after getting fouled by Easton Gulolu, the freshman from Turkey. Great hustle. Oh, Zaya James has like been shot out of the cannon here tonight. She's everywhere. She's, she's really energized to play in this matchup. Sometimes this pink hits players differently, right? Of course, NC State players are well aware of the legacy of Kay Yao. Good double by Collins. Great defense. And Collins is fired up, getting the tie up. The isolation play off the elbow. Collins brings the double. And Jefferson tries to split it. Good job walling up by NC State. Possession arrow kept it with Louisville. Taylor, back rim, batted out. And picked up by Jada Curry, another transfer. Played a couple of years at Cal, where she was a two-time All-Pac-12 performer. It's been coming off the bench now for Jeff Walls to give him some more offense. Curry able to gather, turns, and has it win out. NC State essentially with four guards on the floor, playing a little bit smaller with Mimi Collins at the five. Collins with the miss again. Louisville doesn't need the outlet. They can quickly get the ball advanced up the floor. I don't think that's a shot Jeff Walls wants. You know, Taylor with the long three. Yeah, it's one pass. It's a quick three. Even though Taylor has hit one, Jeff Walls told us today they are much better when they make multiple passes and reverse sides of the floor. And that's something that they keep an eye on. They chart all of that, and the success goes up the more they move the ball. Rivers brings it up. Two minutes inside here in the first quarter. Local crowd. James, oh my goodness. I mean, come on, really? Are you serious? She has as many points individually as Louisville has as a team right now. I mean, Wes Moore just keep running plays for her. Get the ball in her hands. Jefferson, meanwhile. And Jeff Walls goes, let her wear herself out, man. It's a two-point game. <laughs> Jefferson now with six for Louisville. They trim it down to two. Brooks gets her own miss. Good luck, good result for Madison Hayes. That's a lot of points both teams have given up so far in the first quarter, and I love it. I mean, I expected this to be a slow down, grind it out. This has been a much faster paced, much more offensive minded game because players are making shots. Madison Hayes from beyond the arc. Hayes making the second most threes behind James this season. Jefferson got Rivers up in the air, challenged her and got hacked. 
And Sanaya Rivers knows she's got to have better defensive discipline there, and she just couldn't resist going for it. Look at the pump fake, creates a little bit of separation. You get the defense just to lean. Smart take by Jefferson off the bounce. That is two fouls now on Sanaya Rivers, who is a crucial component for this club. Leading them in assists, steals, minutes. Jefferson on the line. Kiki Warner Jefferson Warner. goes to the free throw line, the best free throw shooter in the league, averaging over four attempts per game. Sunday at 2 Eastern, we'll have the women's basketball matchup of the day. How about undefeated South Carolina hosting Paige Beckers and number 11, UConn. Catch that on ESPN in the app. And the big news for South Carolina, Camilla Cardoso will miss that game. She's going to not play the next two games for South Carolina right. because of commitments to the Brazilian national team. She's trying to make the national team. Kudos to Dawn Staley for letting her go, but honestly, I think all coaches across the country do that with their players. You really can't keep them if they need to go and try out. Lacey Steele, a true freshman from Oklahoma. NC State lighting up the scoreboard, and boy, Louisville is answering pretty much every call on the other end. It's Cochran again. NC State has been on fire outside the three-point line. And Olivia Cochran, big O, with that big personality around the rim, has really added to her game in her fourth year. Her ability to step away, knock down face-up jump shots, it's made her more dangerous offensively. Melissa Russell with the basketball in her hands. Get it back out to Jada Curry. Ten seconds to shoot in the waning seconds of the first quarter. Lily Love can't get it. Cochran rescues. Curry needs to shoot. And it goes out of bounds. And it has been called. Initially, Louisville ball, but Joe Vasili went over. Great teamwork there by this officiating crew. Joe Vasili went over to Denise Brooks, said he had a better look, and it is indeed Louisville ball. I mean, you mentioned the crew that we have. Dee Kantner, Joe Vasili, both members of the KL Cancer Fund Board of Directors. Denise Brooks is a cancer survivor, and they're always on this game. Oh, Lee, what a move by Brooks. NC State on the pink game to play for K with their biggest lead of the game as they have a big lead. was sitting next to her in the press conference after we beat Connecticut to go to the final four. A reporter asked her what she was feeling, and she was so overcome with emotion that tears started streaming down her cheeks, and she simply said, my cup runneth over. Support the KL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. You can donate at KL.com. It doesn't matter what you give. As we look at Kevin Keats, the basketball coach, who's won a couple of games in a row, he's here supporting the KEL Cancer Fund. The Play for Gay, Play for K games are going on all around the country, and you can go to KEL.com and you can make a donation, and you will impact someone's life, and you could help some underserved people that don't understand that education is so important. You can help with early detection. There's so many ways you can help the KEL Cancer Fund by donating. And Ward, along with Deb Antonelli, who played here at NC State for KL, was the head coach for 34 years, the last 20 years fighting cancer, finally succumbing. It's unbelievable. It's been 15 years since she passed away. It's hard to believe that 737 wins in her career, Pam. Gold medal for the Olympic team, a Final Four, as you heard Kristen Gillespie talk about in that vignette. Yet all she wants for 738 is to beat cancer. If somebody can help her win 738, that's the number right there. NC State. 
to a great start, Stuart, mostly by Isaiah James, and Olivia Cochran's got 10 for Louisville. Yeah, that's the matchup that we spoke of early, that River Baldwin was going to have her hands full with the quickness and the face-up game. Brooks using her quickness to go to the glass. NC State is getting threes or getting to the rim. Louisville, in a one-possession game, hasn't taken either one of those away, but they've been scoring on the other end. Now James comes away with it. Cut off by Cochran, but Baldwin, that is a picture-perfect pass. James is doing everything. NC State off the bounce. Forces Jeff Walls into a timeout. High off the glass by the freshman. Madison Hayes, number 21 for NC State, is a transfer from Mississippi State, and that's the shoe she has on tonight, playing not just for her family, but for Nikki McRae, who was her coach at Mississippi State. And coach, and we remember Nikki McRae, she's on the Olympic team, played for Pat Summit at Tennessee so many years in the WNBA. She, we lost her last July to breast cancer. Nikki McRae and Tasha Butts gone too long, too quickly. It's really sad, really. And we're here to celebrate survivors today at halftime, which is typically very uplifting, which is exactly what Coach Al would have wanted. That was her vision. Right. Makes something positive out of something so negative. Jefferson with the miss, and Hayes, good box out, able to bring it up the court. Big team shooting well. NC State shooting 55% for the game. Oh my goodness. Zoe Brooks went through a little bit of a spell where she was, you know, not shooting so well. I think that spell has been broken. That, that's the first mid-range jumper that NC State has hit in the first half. Most of their shots are threes and layups or free throws. Cochran with the miss. NC State has done a good job moving without the ball, Pam. That is well off the mark. Shot by the freshman Steele. Little two-man game with Olivia Cochran. Oh boy, Baldwin just stopped Kiki Jefferson in her tracks. There's a ball and moving her feet, but the up and under by Cochran. And Louisville has not been on the offensive glass. They have a couple of offensive rebounds. And they need some extra possessions. And Hayes able to get yet another rebound, but boy, Zoe Brooks. Uh, 10 points in their win against North Carolina. That was on Thursday, and how about that pass, Brooks to Baldwin? Just really good action on the weak side. And one of the things that Wes Moore told us is he wants to get River Baldwin moving around block to block, elbow to elbow, and not just sit her on the low block. Let her move. She's better when she catches that way. Baldwin coming back from an ankle injury that forced her to miss three games. They lost two of them, and Coach Moore says River is still getting back to form. Perfect form for Matty Hayes. Jeff Walls has called a timeout. NC State has hit six of its 11 threes. Absolutely on fire. In transition, they're finding numbers and making shots. Watch the screen by Steele. back. NC State is just shooting the lights out here. An 11-0 run. Jeff Walls calls a timeout with his team now down 15. He had to call two timeouts during this NC State run. 
They've tried multiple defenses. They've switched up some ball screen coverage. NC State's played at a high pace. They've been able to score in transition. They've made some good decisions. They've turned the ball over the first possession. Other than that, they haven't turned it over. Jefferson. They get it inside where it's a three-second violation. Nyla Harris was hanging out there a long time waiting for the ball. That's two timeouts and two ATOs where Louisville doesn't score. NC State outscoring Louisville 11 to 2 in this quarter, including 11 straight. Brooks draws contact, no foul. Louisville with numbers. Three ball not falling on the other end. They've only hit one of their seven from distance, the Cardinals. And when you got numbers like that, you got to attack. You had an advantage. See, Louisville's got a state connected right here. They are ninth in the ACC in three-point percentage. But their numbers have been a little bit better in conference yep. play. They've been shooting 50% from the floor in ACC play. Boy, James is getting whatever she wants, yep. man. She has been terrific. Jefferson gets her first foul, and Isaiah James, who has hit three of her four threes, has 16 points. Coming up next Monday, the Cardinals highlight ACC Network's men's basketball doubleheader. First, Virginia takes on Pitt at 7 Eastern, and then follow it with Louisville welcoming in playing at Boston College. Pardon me, that one will be up in Chestnut Hill. Good attack of the basket that time, but Louisville just struggling to score just two points in this quarter. They're just not moving the ball. They're settling for either one pass or they're trying to attack off the bounce. And this is where a Louisville team that is 56% of their baskets have been assisted. They need to move the ball. Possession arrow points in favor of Louisville. Trying to get it inside to Cochran and the steal from one of the Three freshmen who get a lot of playing time for Coach Moore, Lacey Steele, who then got fouled. If you're going to make that pass, you got to wrap around, or you take one more dribble and improve that angle. It's two fouls now on Sidney Taylor. I like what Livia Cochran did, though. She went over to Taylor and said, come on, we got you, you know, let's go. And, and Taylor responded positively back. That's what you need to do right now if you're Louisville to stay, stay connected. Now Cochran, the definite leader of this team. And James goes in. Oh, 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 oh. Off come on, Pam. 20 points for Isaiah James. Now Cochran trying to counter, maybe doing a little bit too much on her own. She does have 10 points. Chancey pass taken away. Jefferson tries to split the defenders and she draws a whistle. But Isaiah James putting on a clinic here tonight. I mean, she just does what she wants when she wants to. She has been fantastic. She's hit triple, she's been off the bound, she's already been to the free throw line. She's got an incredible focus. You know, sometimes the pink brings that extra focus. I always think that teams, this time of year when it's the play for K games, they play really well. And then we get to the postseason and conference tournaments and they play really well. And then they go to another level when we get to the NCAA. I think that's the progression for teams in the NCAA on the women's side. Kiki Jefferson at the line. Outstanding free throw shooter. 
gets them both. NC State just overpowering so far here in this second quarter. Good save by Hayes. James, why not? And the save attempt. Terrific effort, but ends up being all for naught. Nyla Harris making the extra effort right here. And there were about 10 Wolfpack fans that helped her back up to her feet. She goes toppling over the stands. Good catch over there. Yeah. After, after some of them were pointing at the sideline to make sure that Joe Vasily got the call right. <laughs> She's out of bounds and will help her. Certainly some great fans here. Baldwin zips it over, gets it back, pops, left it short. River was telling us today she doesn't quite have her lift yet. Takes a while to come back from that ankle injury. To be careful with her minutes in practice. And Baldwin's going to get called for the blocking foul. You know, she's a tremendous weak side helper, but on the ball right there, Olivia Cochran with a quick first step to the baseline. Look at the spin right here. Gets right inside. Ooh, that was a tough one. But you know what? Neither one of these teams has tremendous shot blockers that protect the rim. They're very good at rotating defensively. NC State's been better at it here in the first half than Louisville has. Louisville, second of the last, second fewest blocks per game in the league. Good double. There, the horn. There's an extra side, Pam, and a wide open look. Now you got to make it. Matt Curry unable to get it down. Through the NC State backcourt, so athletic. And that was one of the major concerns for Jeff Walls. Really likes their guards and knows how dangerous they are. And he's seen it firsthand tonight. Eagles missed nine of its 10 shots in this quarter. Take that away. It's a travel. Nightmare of the second quarter for Louisville, who are only down six going into the second. Baldwin gets a break. It's a really important 240 right here for Louisville. They got to get a couple of stops and a couple of scores. If they can do that, they can get right back in it for some momentum and get back in the game. James across court. Steal. Off a little bit to the right and then a foul on James trying to get a steal. NC State foul, number 10, Isaiah James. First foul on Isaiah James, and that's some pretty good company right there. Tar Vandeveer, congratulations. Now uh, past Coach K for the most wins ever in men's or women's basketball. Gino seven behind. Lisa Bluter, portfolio over Little Rock and Westmore. Who spent 15 years at Tennessee Chattanooga, very successful years. All the other coaches have most of their wins at the same school. Tara has wins from Idaho and Ohio State, as well as Stanford. Gino, all of those at UConn, Bluter, some at Drake, some at Iowa. All in the state of Iowa for Lisa yeah. Bluter. Lisa, who is a, a native of Marion, Iowa. Have we gone uh, it, this deep into the game? We haven't brought up Caitlin Clark. We're going to talk about Lisa Bluter. I mean, does, doesn't Caitlin Clark come before Lisa Bluter? Yeah. Uh, Caitlin's <laughs> helped her have some wins. That's for sure. That's Mallory Collier, another freshman. And steal. then a steal. Wow. My goodness. For the pack right now. Wow. They are putting it on. Walls has already called two timeouts. Contact out on the perimeter. Second on James. Heads up play by Zoe Brooks. There's the score inside and then just a casual play by Cochran to Turn it over. Zoe Brooks heads up. One minute to go in the half. Cochran got it out. 
And finally, Cochran is able to put one home. I mean, she's had the most success in the first half. By far, she's got 12 of their points. It's a two for one opportunity if NC State went quick, but you know what? They've had so much success running their stuff. James passed up the three for the short jumper. And a half second difference between the clocks. Quick shot, Ricards. Spent her first five years at the University of Florida. Knocked it down. And now NC State can indeed use up the rest of the clock. Zoe Brooks terrific off the bench tonight. Kick it out, Madison Hayes. With the miss, but a second quarter avalanche by NC State. They scored 47 points. That is the most given up in any half this season for a Louisville team that's only lost three games overall and just one in the conference. They take a 47 to 30 lead into the locker room. And they are playing inspired basketball on this very emotional night. We will have much more of the halftime ceremony here on Play for K-9. When it comes to this disease, you need help. You need a support system. And that was something that was important to Coach K. Yao, empowering women. And so she used her voice to raise money and to start this amazing K. Yao Fund for women in underserved communities. to the 19th annual Play for K halftime celebration. I'm Debbie Antonelli, and I'm gonna be your host for this incredible celebration. 19 years ago, when Kay Yao decided that she wanted to share her vision and her love for fans and people at NC State to come together in support of her battle with cancer. She made her battle very public so she could help other people. And then it turned into a national event called Play for K, where over a thousand schools across the country are celebrating like we are at halftime today, celebrating those survivors that have battled a courageous fight, that have come together here to share inspiration and to help all of you know that education, early detection, providing funds for research and serving the underserved are missions that Kay Yao would have wanted everyone to participate in. And that's what I want you to be thinking about as we get to do what we get to do next, which is celebrate those that have battled and appreciate how hard their journeys have been. They're making their battle public with you because they want to inspire you and inspire others to get involved. So the first thing we're going to do is bring out our zero to two year survivors. Zero to two year survivors. Amanda Lentz, a two-year cancer survivor, is our line leader. Oh. Wow, thank you so much. My name is Amanda Lentz, and I'm honored to be here with those behind me, the zero to two-year survivors. So while we fought the physical battle alone, we could not have done it without you, our friends, our family, our community. So to those who have gone before us, thank you for sharing your strength, your inspiration, and your hope. And to those who have just started your journey, please know that you are entering a sisterhood of support, of love, and of strength. Thank you. All right, Amanda. 
We are with you, Amanda, and everyone in that zero to two year survivor line. How about three to five years? Cancer survivors! Carol Pendleton, a five-year cancer survivor, is our line leader. Wow. Hey, guys. The coolest thing is to see all the pink out here. So the biggest and most important thing is to thank every single one of you supporters who've donated and just supported all of us all of these years. I've got to give a shout out to the zero to two year survivors because I think that's the hardest ones to walk out on the court. So way to go, ladies. Um, seriously. Um, I've got a dear friend whose name is Angie Locke. I went to Meredith right down the street back in 81 to 85, way back. And she has brought me every year ever since I was diagnosed with breast cancer. and. I had no idea about this event, but y'all don't know how much it means. So thank y'all very much. Way to go, Carol. We hear you. Six to 10 years, cancer survivors. That's right, ladies, celebrate. Sherry Allen, a seven-year cancer survivor, our line leader. Like many busy moms, I wasn't very good at taking care of myself. But for some reason, when my doctor told me to start getting my mam mammograms, I started doing it on schedule. The second mammogram, I was diagnosed with a very aggressive um, triple negative breast cancer. But thanks to early detection, modern medicine, the support of my awesome family, James and Chloe are up there somewhere, um, friends and people I didn't even know, seven and a half years later, I'm here and I'm healthy and I found my calling supporting other breast cancer survivors. That's right, Sherry. That's right. Thanks for the work of the K. Yao Cancer Fund, more and more women are going to have cancer success stories. So please support the K. Yao Cancer Fund, get your mammograms, and go pack! Eleven to fifteen years survivors. Julie Lemon, a fourteen year cancer survivor. Hello, my name is Julie Lemon, and as she said, I'm a 14 year cancer survivor. All of these women behind me are a testament to the fact that people are surviving longer. Thank you to the Play for K Cancer Fund for helping to make this possible. And go Wolf Back! <laughs> 16 to 20 year cancer survivors! Greta Hickman, a 17-year cancer survivor. Greta. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. We can't have done this without the support of our friends and family. We're a small but mighty group. We have 17, 19, and 20-year survivors here with me. And without your generosity, we couldn't have certainly have made it this far. We are here just like you are to help raise funds to fight for a cure for everyone who's in this journey with us. And we are not alone. How about 21 to 25 year survivors? <laughs> Let's hear it, Tony Sugg, a 23 year cancer survivor. I just want to reemphasize the need for early detection. I truly believe that's why I'm 23 years out. My best friend is in the next group. She's 31 years out. My sister is 30 years out the first time, 17 the second time, and we have no genetic markers, no family history. So get your mammograms, do it well. Take care of yourself so we can grow this group. And finally, 25 plus years survivors. A 30 
seven-year cancer survivor, Diane Wetzel. I take it? All right, 37 years, Diane Wetzel. 37, I was only 38 years old when I was diagnosed and I had no family history of cancer whatsoever. Somebody encouraged me to get a baseline mammogram. I expected nothing to happen of it. Came out and they said, well, you need to have a biopsy. So I did. Didn't think anything would happen with that either, but it did. And anyway, 37 years later, I'm still here. And the reason I'm here is because of just early treatment, early diagnosis. That's it. I would not be here if I had waited until I was what they say should be old enough. So it's great because organizations like the KEL Cancer Fund, we didn't have anything like that back then, but now we do. Educating everyone to get, the, get your screening done. Women's health care is important, and that's why we're supporting this. And please, donate to this. They're, they're, they're contributing to research and everything else. I know you don't have time. You've got families. You've got jobs. Get the mammograms. Do the self-exams. All right? You got to do it. We you got you, Diane. It. We got you. Okay. Well, lastly, health care is on the ballot this year. November, vote wisely. And go pack! <laughs> Ladies, gather in closer. Come in a little tighter. Bring your group together. Because what you have done individually and collectively has taken us all to another level. You've, you've raised our awareness. You've taught us that you can be strong, you can be brave, you can fight your own journey. And that's exactly what Kay Yao did, and that's exactly what she would have wanted each one of us to understand and to help. And the last thing she would say is, what more can we do? Each one of us can do a little bit more to make somebody else's journey easier. So if you can donate, to kyow.com, please do so because every amount will matter and you might save somebody's life. It wouldn't it be cool if you could save the person's life sitting or standing right next to you. Ladies, thank you. Congratulations on your journey. back where Isaiah James and NC State had a dominant first half, especially the second quarter. Isaiah James with 20 points, Louisville down by 17 at the half. And you take a look, the stats certainly back up the numbers James has been bringing. Olivia Cochran trying to hold her own, but NC State 6 of 15 from three, that's 43%. Most points allowed in any half this season by Louisville, who's only lost three games all year and just one in the ACC. We'll be back with the second half shortly. Coach Yao's greatest gift and lasting legacy is the K. Yao Cancer Fund. For over 15 years, the K. Yao Cancer Fund has been making significant impact in the fight against cancers affecting women. As part of the fund's underserved mission, a current focus is to eliminate racial disparities in cancer outcomes, as black women face a 12% higher mortality rate. Support the K. Yao Cancer Fund in partnership with WBCA and the V Foundation. Donate at kyao.com. Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN and Big Monday on this big play 4K night. And what a first half it has been for NC State. Absolutely blistering shots in the second quarter. Yes, they're leading 47 to 30 over Louisville. Pam Moore along with Deb Antonelli, who just did the emceeing for that always emotional yes. play for K halftime ceremony. And it looks like NC State's pretty darn inspired too. Yeah, I would say so, particularly Isaiah James. My goodness, seven for 11 from the floor. She's got 20 of NC State's 47. I didn't think she could miss. I mean, she went back door to score first. Then she was terrific picking up a loose ball, but she was 
on point with every way Louisville tried to guard her. She made the defense wrong. That's what good offensive players do. And Isaiah, John, uh, Isaiah James knocked down triples, got to the free throw line, got all the way to the rim. She's quick, she's athletic, she's shifty, and she is really tough to guard. Junior from Virginia Beach. And has been terrific for this team that shot 49% from the floor, 6 of 14 from three. Louisville, meanwhile, only one of eight from three. Jeff Walls trying to figure some things out. This is their largest halftime deficit since 2018 when they trailed UConn by 20. They did not come back to win that game, and they are in quite a hole here as we get going. Play for Kay in honor of the late, great former head coach here at State. Bring awareness to breast cancer and women's cancers. James trying to go behind the back. And that missed foul. Okay, now, Wes Moore is not going to be pleased with that because you can't play to the scoreboard if you're NC State. And neither can Louisville. It's opposite attitudes here, right? You got to stick to the game plan and not just try to take a risk on something. Both coaches start with horns to start the second half. It's when you have two posts on the elbows and you have shooters in the corner. Taylor driving on Baldwin, who cut her off nicely and almost forced another turnover. Cochran got it inside, and there's the hands of who else? Isaiah James. I mean, she's just everywhere right now, and she's active, and she's got heads up, and that's a great feed inside to Collins. Yeah, it should have been an assist, but Collins missed. And then on her second attempt, got fouled. Here's the things that Jeff Walls probably said to his team at halftime, okay? You guys want to do it your way? Okay. We're down 17. We're going to do it my way. We're going to come back in the second half. They're getting beat down the court. They're not connected on defense. They need to communicate. And he knows how to put a team together and win. So I would suggest that they listen to exactly what he said. And he gave us the game plan today. He told us exactly what his team needed to do to win, and I don't think they've done it. Collins, one out of two at the line. Her numbers well up from last year. Not a lot expected for NC State. Picked eighth in the league, and here they are right near the top. Number three in the country. I mean, it's a tremendous coaching job by Wes Moore. The cards. Getting it over to Harris. It'll fade away, and Rivers showing her great athleticism, able to go way up to get it. And NC State's team speed down the floor is faster than Louisville right now. And they've got to do a better job of putting some pressure on the ball, slowing down the progression of the ball up the court. Cochran got lost underneath there for a spell, but then missed the layup. James got fouled by Cochran. This is the second one on Olivia. So there's the latest AP poll that came out today. NC State all the way up to third and remarkable. They were unranked at the beginning of the season. And by the time December hit, they were in the top 10. Well, that's because they had wins over Colorado and UConn, which vaulted them quickly into the top 10. And when you looked at that poll right there, right now, Charlie Cream has them as a one seed. Number three overall. He has Louisville right now as a three seed. And look, Wes has had success. He's won three ACC tournament titles. He's won the regular season in the ACC. He's been to the lead eight. Lost in overtime on the road at UConn in Bridgeport when UConn was a two and NC State was a one. Good defense. Baldwin and Collins forcing it back their way. So Charlie Cream also had a brand new bracketology come out today. And it's all over the ACC. And you mentioned this earlier. All these teams are in. No bubble. They're right. in, They're according to Charlie. Seated. Not on the bubble, last four in. You know, there's nine teams here. That's how good the league has been. And, you know, there's several teams that are still on the host bubble right there for the, for the ACC. Taylor gets a tough bucket. Sydney Taylor, the grad transfer from UMass, now has five. 
And if Louisville can get three stops in a row, three scores, and speed up the game a little bit with their pace on both sides of the ball, they can get right back in this. All you're trying to do is cut it in half, Pam, by the fourth quarter. You saw great pace and success for them in the first, the early portion of this game, but second quarter belong to State. Olivia Cochran, great. One to the rim. Besides that being a telegraphed pass to the interior, it was the wrong angle. You have to be a better post-entry passer. Madison Hayes. In transition, Louisville is just not matching up. State continues to be hot from three-point range. Madison Hayes goes under that screen. And the finish underneath the Harris. And see, that's why you want to move the ball. If you come down and go one pass and drive, the defense is loaded up to one side. If you reverse it, skip sides, make an additional pass, you get the defense in rotation. Baldwin. Took, a, took an extra step. So Louisville has been down by as much as 21, trying to get back in this thing. And this is a tough angle. Good collapse by Louisville. And Olivia Cochran out ahead of the ball. You've moved the ball, you get rotation, and you stay active moving without the ball. That's how that bucket scores. And Cochran really doing a great job this year. They Lost a lot from last year. Morgan Jones, Liz Dixon, Haley Van Lip going to LSU, and Mikasa Robinson, who is such a blue player and a great defensive player, now a grad assistant for Jeff Walls. So a lot of roles, a lot of things to fill. Really good defensive effort by NC State. The clear out by Louisville, the help, the recover, and the box out. I mean, keep in mind, the back of NC State's jerseys all have words of encouragement and inspiration, not their names. And Rivers got back, and that made Harris back away. Yes, in this play for K-Day. Harris showing you some of her skill set. Came in rather raw offensively, a good defender, has certainly worked hard to polish that part of her game, and now averaging 10 points per game. The lead is 13, and boy, Wes Moore I think is about to bust a gut over there. Not happy with this run put together by Louisville. Timeout in Raleigh. My favorite memory of Coach Yao is her love for her players on the court and in their life's journey. It's her being determined to be dead smack in the middle of the court during practice. And she would say, just one more time at the end of practice, and we've already been practicing for three hours. She would not let us leave until we got it right. Some of the many former NC State Wolfpack players who are honoring their former head coach, Kay Yao. The Yale Cancer Fund and this Play for K packed house. 34 years she graced the sidelines for ACC tournament titles, got up to one Final Four, and yes, won an Olympic gold medal as a head coach for the U.S. as well. She was a remarkable person, an incredible teacher, cared about her players as people first, players second, loved the profession and all the coaches in it. You never heard anyone say, a derogatory word about her. She had a lot of friends. She's got a great family. And then she has this incredible legacy through her former players and through the fund. People will maybe not know about her le legacy as a basketball coach, but they certainly are aware of the Play for K games and the power of pink. I can't believe it's been 19 years since this game was created here. Jefferson with another bucket. NC State has five turnovers in this quarter. That was in the yeah. first five minutes. And they only had four turnovers in the whole first half. So they've gotten sloppy. They've got to tighten it up. Collins finished. Harris tried to buy the 
charge call. Curry saw a little bit of daylight, but then Collins came over and shut it down. Curry Brooks with the defense. And the ball heads back over to State. So Louisville's put a little game pressure on NC State. So now you got to tighten up. You could have called a flop there. I always think it's a professional courtesy by the officials not to call it. The second time they do it, they will call it. But that was a pretty good step through move by Mimi Collins. Brooks unable to finish. Now Cochran brings the ball up all by herself. Watch out when Big O gets motor in yeah. She can go. Curry. He's done a really good job of attacking the basket here. And NC State's lost some of their focus, right? And Westmore's trying to get it out of them right now. He has been very animated on the sideline over there in the second half. He knows Jeff Walls was going to adjust and his team was going to come out and play better in the second half. Walls, one of the very best at making adjustments. And Coach Moore talked about how he always has tricks up his sleeve. You never know what he's going to pull. Mimi Collins just called, called for her third personal foul, and that sends Jada Curry to the line, where she's just scored her first point. I think there's three really important pieces to coaching. One is recruiting. The other is developing talent. The other is playing and making adjustments in-game. Both these coaches are excellent at all three. Can't say that about everybody. Yes. A 21 point deficit has been sliced to 11. That was a 17 point lead at the half. Rivers hit. You know, this is where Sanaya Rivers' game has matured. And I say that because she doesn't need to score to impact the game. I think she's the defensive player along with Hannah Hidalgo in the conversation for Defensive Player of the Year. And she has an impact on the right side of the box score, meaning rebounds, assists, steals. And she's not a natural point guard. Last year, she got thrust into it at the end of the season. And then she had all summer to get ready. And Wes Moore will tell you he'd like for her assist turnover ratio to be a little bit better, but otherwise, Having her size on the top of the floor and her quickness has a lot to do with NC State's success. Well, she still is sixth in the ACC in assist to turnover ratio, but thrown into the fire last year, as you mentioned, and has become a better all-around basketball player this year. That last foul, by the way, was the third on Cochran, who just fumbled it away. Collins. <laughs> Transition threes, Pam. My goodness. When Jeff Walls goes back and clips that and shows his team how many triples they've given up in transition, it's not going to be a pretty sight. Cochran isolated there against Collins. Taylor elevates. Cochran. Goes up strong and got fouled. Look at Big O. Going to work. Mishandled by Cochran, but she doesn't get her head down, right? NC State in transition, knocks down the triple. Hard to catch up on a live ball turnover. And then she has an incredible motor on this end of the floor as well. Thursday night at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the app. Another women's basketball matchup between number 12 Notre Dame and the aforementioned Hannah Hidalgo and 15th ranked Louisville. Check that out Thursday, 6 Eastern on ESPN. Hidalgo, boy, this freshman class. Oh my goodness, so good. Ridiculous. Oh, so good. I mean, must see Juju Watkins is mm -hmm. killing it out there at Southern Cal. Lindsey Gottlieb's done a heck of a job with that group. 51 against Stanford and Tara Vanderbilt. I wonder how much film Tara must have watched before the game. 
to prepare for Juju Watkins. Rivers has it bounce out. And Isaiah James, who had 20 points in the first half, is yet to score here in the third quarter. But she will have a chance to hit free throws. James really came on strong in their last game, a win against Duke. Made over 10 points coming in the fourth quarter. Which against North Carolina, pardon me. The strength of NC State is their balance. Six different leading scorers, five different players have had a double-double. Westmore has not, never had a team that's done that. Zoe Brooks, the freshman, has had a triple-double. And they're a pretty connected group. They got really good chemistry. And that's something that's just so important. And bounced out. Picked up by Curry. In a couple of years at Cal, over in the Pac-12, soon to be in the ACC. by Rivers. Tough shot off the glass. And the Out of bounds on Hayes. Ball stays with 19 seconds to shoot. Jefferson able to slice into the lane. I'm telling you, game pressure. You're making NC State hesitate. You're making them think. And you're scoring better if you're Louisville, so you're able to set your defense and you're not playing in transition. And you have to go in the third. The other thing too, Jeff Walls has taken all the full court pressure, quarter court pressure stuff off pan because what that does sometimes, especially for a team like NC State, it opens up the court where they can see lanes and they use their speed and athleticism. If you get back and set your D, you're forcing them to execute in the quarter court. That's what you want against NC State. Curry. Well, fade away and nailed it. Jada Curry. Well, this is the closest this game has been in a while and NC State will have the last possession here. And here comes the full court pressure again. State scoring just 12 points so far in this quarter. We got to go. It's Brooks, the freshman, front rim, and an opportunity. Curry just off the back of the rim. About Louisville slicing in to the lead. Watch this take right here. A little bump and a great finish. Louisville is creeping back in. It's a 10-point game. Time to take a look at tonight's Wooden Watch presented by Principal. And these are Deb Antonelli's top five. Yeah, I love these five. I'll take these five, Pam. You can pick another five. I don't care who you pick. I mean, this is a good group right here. Caitlin Clark leads the country in scoring, and she's closely approaching. Anticipated on February 15th. And she's going to take on playing Michigan at home. And then, of course, here we go right here, UConn, South Carolina. It's a big rivalry. We've been waiting for this one. Yep, you get to see Paige Beckers in that one. That is coming up Sunday at 2 Eastern time on ESPN and on the app. South Carolina is still unbeaten. And the UConn going to go down there. That's another place you can't get a ticket. No, nope, no ticket. South Carolina. No. Nope. I mean, well, you can, but you got to. Well, they've led the nation in, ten, in attendance like 12 years in a row. It's amazing what Don Staley has done down there. The Pam product. Moore and De Deb Antonelli, pardon me, joining you here as we start the fourth quarter. The product is the narrative. That's why people buy a ticket to go watch, because that is a winning program that Don built from scratch. Remember when she took that job and some people were like, why the heck is she yep. taking that job? I, I it's a bad job. No, I knew why she took it. And a couple of natties and just building a great program. And when you are the quality of Dawn and every little girl grew up with a poster on their wall, you knew you were going to build 
And Asia Wilson was a turning point for South Carolina. When she committed, a local kid from Columbia, everything changed. It's like NC State, right? Westmore, like look at this place. It's unbelievable. Tonight it's pink, but it's always full and it's red on most nights. But the product was good and then people bought tickets to come watch because the product was good. The product's gotta be good first before you can have all the other things. Concessions, parking, marketing, all that. If, you're, if you don't win and you don't have a good product, nobody wants to watch it. It doesn't matter what promotion you put on it. Maddie Hayes called for the charge, and then when people come out, they see the product, and they keep on coming back. Dawn Staley has a blueprint. Wes Moore has a blueprint. Jeff Walls has a blueprint. 8,000 fans a game at his place. Job he has done, and they play in a KFC Yum Center, which is a beautiful facility. And you know what we got here is an eight-point ball game. Louisville. You're just joining us, down by 17 at the half, trail, trailed by as many as 21. Largest ha halftime deficit they have faced since 2018. And here they are, only down by eight. NC State's got to tighten up, because it's a ball game now. What they were doing in the first half was moving the ball, playing in transition, and Louisville's taking a lot of that away. This has become a quarter-court game, and there's another turnover. Wow, an unforced turnover. Rivers has it go off her hands. 26-17 was the last time this game was in single digits, and that was back in the first quarter. State continuing to, to not hold on to the ball here in the second half after they only gave it away four times in the first in the first half. Curry with the miss. Rebound taken down by Madison Hayes, who's a tough customer. Started her career at Mississippi State. Third year here at NC State. Curry just picked up her first personal for the Cardinals. Well, NC State has turned the ball over. They've let Louisville back in. Louisville's made adjustments offensively. They've done a better job of moving the ball. Because they've been able to score, they can set their defense. Now we got a three-possession game. Oh, poor. Samaya Rivers did everything right except finish. She was lightning quick. The three attempt rims out for Curry. Rebound, Isaiah James. Rivers looking for some help. James able to rescue, puts it up in it. James with 23, she had 20 at the break. I think she took off her headband and now she's balling. <laughs> whatever, whatever she's doing, it's working. And now Reynolds Coliseum gets really loud. Hayes with another rebound. NC State trying to pick up the pace, right? Cross-court pass in transition. James, she's such a cool customer, right? <laughs> it looks like a, a, a soccer slide there. I think Harris she, knocked her over. The bucket, but she, she stuck the landers. Yeah, oh, very, very good. good. Picked her back up. <laughs> yep. Baldwin, short. James from long distance. Cut down. Oh, wow, what a great play. Saved a layup. Absolutely did it with James. That won't be on the stat sheet, but that, you're right. That saved two points. She's got fight on the back of her jersey, does James, and that's what she's done tonight. She brought the fight to Louisville. Curry challenges Baldwin, and it's a charge. This is what River Baldwin does. Remember, the restricted area doesn't matter in the women's game. That arc on the floor doesn't count. Now, was she there when she left her feet? Got to establish legal guarding position. That's something that, both, that Baldwin does really well along with James. They chart charges drawn at state. Baldwin is behind James only in that category on the team. Good D. And 
that's a foul as Kiki Jefferson came down full speed. He's picked up her third. What a swing of emotion right here. And Louisville needs to make their free throws. They've had some games this year, especially on the road at North Carolina, where they didn't shoot free throws well at the end. Uh, Jeff Walls is probably going to bring some full court pressure here after these made free throws. And Jefferson shooting into the student section. And she is the best free throw shooter in the ACC percentage-wise this season. Seemingly unfazed. Sunbelt Player of the Year last year with James Madison, also the tournament MVP in the Sunbelt. Calmly gets them both and takes a seat. It's a good substitution to set your defense, get the right personnel on. Defensive possession, here comes a trap. James. And then the freshman, Brooks. So the key there is moving the ball quickly out of the trap and then attacking with numbers on the backside. This is why it's tough to press NC State. I think they are really good in the open floor. And when you open up the court, you bring two to the ball and they move it quickly, they get numbers on the backside and attack. So Zoe Brooks at the line, and observant fans will notice that for the second straight game, she's not wearing goggles. Yeah. She's right. finally got fit for contact, uh, contact lenses. She's working on it. In the first several games, first seven games, no goggles, no contacts. Wears glasses off the court, and now she's going with the contacts. Oh, good cut. Three, foul. It's a really good backdoor cut. A nice give and go. Watch this right here. Zoe Brooks jumps to the ball, but Curry gets a big step on her. You got to have some help from the weak side on that drive down the lane. And the reaction from the fans because they just showed the replay up on the big screen. Brooks takes a seat. Now Curry at the line, 72% on the season. Only five points for Jada, who averages just, just under 10 points, around nine points a game. Did not score at all in the first half. And the lead is six. And with that, Set up some pressure, now they back off. See, this time Jeff Walls changes, removes the trap, goes full court man to man. The card's got a hand on it, but Isaiah James was there to pick it up and get it. I think she wants the ball in the big moments. Hmm? You think? And it's working out. She's got 25 tonight. And contact, Curry frustrated that no foul was called. As we approach five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Curry's taking a lot of shots here. Dribbled into trouble. Shot from the corner. Short. Rebound. Ends up in the hands of Harris. Now Curry this time does not pull the trigger. Taylor. A step through but couldn't get it to fall. Cochran. A timeout. Granted to Louisville. Susan Yao with the statue. The Tunnel of Love by the former players. 
the pep band in the student section, and a 37-year cancer survivor. What a night. One of my favorite memories of Coach Chow is hanging out with her right after she had gotten sick again, and all of a sudden, I didn't know she was wearing a wig. She took that wig off her head and threw it over to the side and said, I need a little bit of space to breathe, and we just kept it moving. In 2007, when she was battling cancer, and we upset Duke in the ACC semifinals, and Duke was uh, ranked number one at the time, and that was an amazing game to be there. State greats who played for KYAL. As we invite you all to support the KYAL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WDCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Donate at KYAL.com. Anything you can do will matter. It will save someone's life. It might save the person that you're watching this game with. Early detection, quality of life, all those things important to KYAL. Cochran too much on the shot. Curry has continued to fire away. She is now one of 13 from the floor and has missed all five of her three-point attempts. Louisville has only hit one three all night as a team. Well, as a team, they only make five a game, so it's not a big part of their scoring. I think they could have made some better choices or different choices. Yeah, 11 as a team, and then that is very... Pace. NC State's got nine as a team. Big three. All of a sudden, it's back to an 11-point lead after Louisville had cut it to six. Can they answer? Yes, finally. Curry gets one to go. It's not always how many you make. It can be when you make them. And Curry has not lost her confidence, that's for sure. On the season, hitting 42% from distance. But a different story tonight. Steele. And the finish for Nina Ricards, the Florida transfer. I mean, that's sloppy exchange by NC State, and Ricards with her quickness. Playing a, little, six. playing a little bit smaller in the backcourt for Jeff Walls. That's a quick shot by James. And a timeout with 2.53 left to go. Cardinals getting closer. Hayes, the ninth triple. And then the quick hands of Ricards. This is always a very special night at Reynolds Coliseum and the checks rolling in for the Play for K game and the KL Foundation. It's a special night. The power of pink, Bojangles and their Bowberry Biscuit, and then the referees, the former players called Ambassadors for K, and then Bo, Bo Corrigan and Jenny Palmatier, the CEO of the KL Cancer Fund. $538,000 and $5 and 86 cents and 86 cents to cap it all off over a half a million dollars tonight in Reynolds Coliseum on K Yao Court a very special night in NC State right now nursing a six point lead Isaiah James has done it all night long. Seems just when Louisville gets close, boom. What a great ATO by Wes Moore. Who you trust the most. And the crowd's starting to come back alive here. Isaiah James with 28, steals it. Got numbers. Yep. Cochran doing just enough to I be mean, disruptive. What a great job by Olivia Cochran. Right. She's really hustling. She has oh, played long. Yeah, she's she's tough now. She's my Mikasa Robinson yeah. now. Yeah, Mikasa was amazing. And well, Cochran looking to take over that leadership role. Tonight Rivers gets fouled. Mikasa Robinson, a great player for Jeff Walls on his staff now. It's a great take by Rivers to draw a foul and get to the line. 
The cards picked up the foul. And now Rivers at the line. There's Mikasa. There she is, one of the great defenders and right side of the box score players in the history of Louisville basketball. I want to give her a, a, a happy birthday wish. She will be turning 24 in about three hours. All she did was win. At yep. And was a player who didn't get a lot of playing time, did not transfer, stuck it out, and now she's a grad assistant. We'd like to go into the more of the strength and conditioning portion, but just the consummate teammate and a, just a heck of a defender. Good kid. State gets that lead back up to 11. He can't do has a foul on the perimeter. Excuse me, underneath on Baldwin, who is baffled. That's three on a river. If you use your chest and not push off with your arms, then you're walling up. And Baldwin is still trying to get back into a groove after coming back from Missing games with an ankle injury. The numbers are well down from before the injury. They're going to review this inside two minutes. And River Baldwin's parents are here. Talk to them before the game from Andalusia, Alabama. And then dad came back and fixed up River's car and brought it back to her. <laughs> Drove 10 hours to, you know what? to deliver it back. That's a good dad. There's not a better personality uh, than River. I mean, she's uh, incredible. She's uh, really battled through this injury. She had some back issues at the beginning of the year, but she's a big part of what they do at 6'5". And she doesn't have uh, foul trouble, so she needs to stay aggressive. Pete Kander's got the call on the floor is Louisville or NC State ball and they're going to look at it inside two minutes. So this is serving as a timeout for both teams. Zaya James really coming alive here in the fourth quarter. She has nine points. She had 20 in the first half, just one point in the third. And some big buckets here after Louisville made it a close game. And keep in mind, neither team has a foul to give. NC State has all four timeouts remaining. Louisville with one. Possession arrow belongs to the Cardinals. They're going to reverse the call, Pam, and it's going to go the other way. So... 20 seconds stays on the shot clock because they're going to determine it was not a change of possession. Even that it was off of James. So Curry inbounds. 20 seconds to shoot, just 137 left in the game. And they were shot, they get it, and they... Get the three, Sydney Taylor knocks it down. And look at the sense of urgency with which Louisville accelerated through that action. Now they got to get a stop. This is where NC State and execution has to be critical. You cannot have game slippage right now. Can't turn it over. You got to make the right players taking the right shots. But it's there. Turner. Cochran, another big play. Calling for the ball. But instead, it was held on to by Ricards, who drew a foul. Watch the ball movement by Louisville right here on a sideline out of bounds play. This is excellent execution. The, the drive, the help, and then Sidney Taylor. And then on the other end, that's a foul on Denia Rivers. It's the third on Rivers. And now Ricard's at the line. He's done a really good job at the free throw line tonight to stay close. The NC State's got to cut hard here to get the ball in bounds. Louisville can't get beat over the top. Or oh, there's an offensive rebound by Olivia Cochran. Who else would come up with a hustle play? He has had a tremendous game. Big rebound. 
to River. And River Baldwin rebounded that like she meant it. Two hands in traffic. And boy, Olivia Cochran has certainly given her all tonight. A double-double, 17 points, 11 rebounds. Getting her hands in passing lanes to force turnovers. Baldwin steps to the line. 86% on the season. State. The excitement's going to continue here at Reynolds Coliseum because Thursday night Virginia Tech comes to town. We will have that for you on the ACC Network. A little revenge. Big game. In hand for State. That was their first loss of the season. They had won 14 in a row. And it was that perfect inbounds play, the Liz Kitley finish. So we look forward to that. And Louisville is in a tough stretch on their schedule. Cochran drew another one. Really good isolation and we started the game talking about that particular matchup and how River Baldwin was going to have her hands full with the quickness. It's a leverage right here. Look how Cochran plays the game low to high. It's a low man win situation right there. She gets her shoulders and her hip passed. River Baldwin and Big O draws a foul and gets to the line. And they're chanting chicken in here because if she misses the next one, they get chicken. And especially in the student section, right? I want that chicken. Let's do that chicken. But Curry, after the offensive rebound, hits the three. Back-to-back -back offensive rebounds on missed free throws by NC State. Westmore calls timeout to advance the ball. We got a six-point game again. Look at that rebound by Harris. And Curry, late in the game, has gotten hot from the three. Curry, a very slow start in this game, but a, a good finish. She was shut out in their game against Syracuse. And off to a slow start here, but it's hit some threes down the stretch. And there's your reset. No fouls to give. Louisville just one timeout. Possession arrow in favor of Louisville, but State is the ball, and as Deb said, they get to advance it. Well, you got to be strong with the ball. You got to be able to cut hard right here. And Louisville's going to look to trap, and they're probably going to try to get a try to get a steal. And if not, they're going to foul right away. And for NC State, you know, on the floor right now, that's a pretty good free throw shooting group. Rivers inbounds in front of the state bench. Look for Sanaya Rivers to get it right back. There she is. She does. Backs off a little bit. Clock is definitely on their side. Daring Louisville to foul. And Wes Moore called a timeout. They got eight, seven seconds to come off the clock. NC State just burns their second timeout. Same thing, right? You got to cut hard. You cannot jog through any set right now. It drives me nuts when players jog through their yeah. cuts. You should basket cut and exit cut, and you should sprint to the three-point line. When you come through the basket, go back out to the three-point line. And NC State's got to cut to the ball hard. Olivia Cochran with a double-double tonight. But her team down by six. Men's basketball will follow us as soon as we're finished.
time ticking away. Ricards finally fouls River Baldwin. Just getting ready to say, do not put the ball over your head right now. You got to play the game low. NC State today has not done a great job at the line. Just 13 of 20. That's 65 percent. River Baldwin is an 86 percent free throw shooter. She has hit both of her previous free throw attempts in this game just a little while ago. Rugo goes home to host Notre Dame and they play Syracuse again. NC State better find Curry because you don't want to give up a three here. No reason to foul. Pitch 21. Russell. Sanaya Rivers skies to get the rebound by the rim to get that board. And very likely has put this game on ice. Brick Wall's team, good job coming back, down by as many as 21. Failed by 17 at the half, their largest deficit since 2018 at the half. Well, they put some pressure on NC State, that's for sure. We like to call it game pressure when you make the other team hesitate and execution has to be at a premium. And I thought NC State got a little loose in the second half. And Louisville put some pressure on them. They got to within six points twice here in the fourth quarter, but NC State is able to respond. Now it's a 10-point advantage. And Isaiah James really got things off on the right foot. 20 in the first half. She was fantastic. I mean, she made every play. To the rim, at the line, beyond the arc, in transition. She just had a great first half to lead NC State. She got him started quickly. All right. She can score. She leads the team in scoring. She came on at the end of last year, had a great off season. She's put the work in. Four threes today, 28 points for James. On 18 field goal attempts, that's excellent. Nice and efficient. Well, it's a big battle right now. You got a log jam at the top of the ACC standings, right? Because Virginia Tech sits there with two losses. NC State's got two losses, and now Louisville will have two. I said uh, earlier, it's gonna be three or four losses that the team that wins this league. Still have four weeks to go in the regular season. Great for the fans. It's gonna be a fantastic finish. And Louisville will join the two-loss club. Their two losses in the league to North Carolina and in 19.3 seconds, unless something crazy miraculous happens, it will be NC State. And with Virginia Tech coming into play State and Notre Dame next for Louisville. Rims out for Jefferson and now Louisville backs off. And on the play for K Knight, the NC State Wolfpack will come away with a 77-67 win, and there's a mutual respect society right there meeting up. So NC State, fifth time they've beaten the top 25 team for Deb Antonelli and our entire crew. I'm Pam Ward, inviting you to stay tuned for men's college basketball, Southern and Jackson State, as we say goodnight from Raleigh.